thing to understand here is that, and let's just talk about cobalt first, is that cobalt is not a accumulating toxicant. It's not a, what we call an accumulating metal. Some metals are, for example, lead. You know, most of the lead that we are exposed to is stored in our bones. And then as we age, it becomes an, an endogenous source, of, you know, an internal source uh, for lead as, as, we, as we age and it's released from our bones. So, 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 so cobalt's different. Cobalt is not a bone-seeking element. Most of the cobalt uh, uh, in our bodies is stored in our liver as part of vitamin B12. Uh, over 50% of it's in the liver, right? So, so cobalt, or let me put it this way, blood, lead, blood levels of, of cobalt are an indication of ongoing recent exposure, All right? So if you think about that, that means anyone who has an elevated uh, blood cobalt level, it tells you that it's coming from some source. And if it's not an occupational source or it's not some other uh, environmental source, and we're talking about individuals here that uh, their elevated cobalt is coming from the wear debris from their hip implant. And the elevated level in the blood then, as I just indicated, is an indication of ongoing continued exposure. The body, the body handles that level of cobalt in the blood by excreting it via the kidneys, and so it appears in the urine. After revision, the expectation is that blood and urine cobalt levels will decrease over time. And you know, the best guess or best estimate as to what that rate would be, I think science informs us that the life, uh, the life uh, stage of a red blood cell is about three months. Most of the cobalt is associated with red blood cells. So you'd, ex you'd expect that as red blood cells turn over post revision, that those cobalt levels are going to decrease. Now, much of what I just told you, again, is based on information that we get from other circumstances of cobalt exposure. I, I'm unaware of any studies that have formally uh, demonstrated uh, what I just told you occurs will, or will occur uh, post revision in, in, in implant patients. But I mean, I think, I think clinically or anecdotally or in, in case reports or case by case uh, uh, circumstances, this is what um, uh, physicians or, or, or surgeons are, are observing. Now, having said all of that, again, let's, let's go back to every toxicology issue has exposure and it has effect. Right, so just so does that mean that uh, you shouldn't be uh, at all aware uh, or concerned, if you will, of the long-term consequences of your heightened cobalt and chromium exposure post revision if your levels are decreasing? And I would say you're not completely out of the woods. And the reason again is every bio every toxicology issue has an exposure and has an effect. And in this case, the effect. Uh, or the, one of the effects is stimulation of an immune response. So even in the absence of uh, continued exposure to cobalt and chromium, the possibility exists that the immune system, and after all the immune system, uh, part of its job in discriminating between self and non-self is to be able to mount amplified responses uh, 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 upon challenge with lower doses of of, of, of whatever the immunogen is, so lower doses of cobalt and chromium. So what I'm saying is, although the cobalt and chromium levels can be decreasing, the long-term immunological and inflammatory processes uh, may still exist. <laughs>